One marketplace I really love to use is Facebook Marketplace. There's great deals out there to be found. The problem is you have to be first. And being first is a really hard problem unless you have some tools to help you do that. So what I've done is I've created a tool that automates the searching and the alerting of Facebook Marketplace. Let's start with a quick demo. So here is the tool. What it's gonna do is do the query in Facebook. It's going to be searching for trucks in the Houston area against a certain price range. And then it's going to screen grab this entire screen and then email me this screen. So let's pop over here to the email. Here is the message. And there is the PNG of the screen grab that you just saw. Before we get started, let's do all of our pip installs. So we're gonna pip install selenium, python.env, and ice cream. Here are the imports we're gonna be using, uh, OS, smtp uh, lib.env, the Selenium driver, the web driver, email message, and ice cream for debugging. The first thing we need to do is actually define something called a debugging port. So we're gonna need to start Chrome in a debugging mode so that we can actually attach to that Chrome process because that process, that Chrome process is gonna be what's logged into Facebook. That's gonna help us bypass all the authentication of using our account in Facebook. Next, we're gonna set up the web driver for Chrome options. And here's the option, so add experimental option. That's the debugger address localhost and the debugging port that we just set here. Next, we're gonna give it the path of our Chrome driver. Now we're gonna set up the service, so executable path, the Chrome driver path, get our service, and then the actual driver, we need to set the service and then those options that we just set. Because remember, we're not spawning up a brand new Chrome browser, we're connecting to one that's already open because we've already passed all the authentication. Here's where we set the URL, which is the search query. You can see here, you've got min price, 2000, max price is here, truck, exact equals false. And let's show you how that kind of works. As you mess with these, you can see the URL up here starts changing. So 1000, 3000, let's say you wanna set delivery method to local pickup, you will see that you get local pickup here in the URL. Another one, let's see here, condition, let's say you only wanna look at fare. You can see item condition equals used underscore fare. Another one here is date listed. You can do 24 hours, seven days. So let's do 24 hours and you'll see that the URL keeps changing. So just build up the URL that you want uh, based on these filters and then bring that URL in here. That'll be the URL you'll set here. Then we're gonna do a driver.get on the URL and then we're just gonna print uh, for fun the title of the page. Now we're gonna set the image path of where we're gonna, actually what we're gonna call the image that we're gonna take a screenshot of because we're gonna do the search and take a screenshot. So let's do it here, logs, pick one.png. Here's the command to actually save a screenshot. So driver.save underscore screenshot and give it the image path. It'll take that screenshot and store it for you. And before we forget, always make sure we do a driver.quit here. But before we quit, we gotta build out a new function and that function is going to be sending the email, the PNG. This is what we're gonna call the function. So we're gonna say send email, we're gonna pass it a subject, we're gonna pass it a body message, and then it also obviously needs the image path so it can send that. Let's come back to the top of our file and build that function. So here it is, send email, message subject, message body, image path. And to start it off, we're gonna set up an email. So the email here is crazecast at gmail. Here is the message, so email message. It's going to have a subject from, to, I just did it for the same, but it could be different. And then message.set content, that's the message body that we pass in. We now need to add the PNG. So what we do is do a with open image path, read binary as image. And then do we, we do a message.add attachment. So image.read, main type is image, and then subtype is PNG, and the file name is obviously the image path. And here's where we actually connect to Gmail to do that work. So SMTP lib, Gmail, there is the port. And here's how we log in. So you're gonna need, there's your email, and then you're gonna have to set up your Google token that actually allows your app to log in to do that, and I'll show you those steps. And then it's just SMTP, dot send message and you send the message. Then we'll have one little debug here to tell us that the message was sent. Next, let's go ahead and create a dot env file. This is going to store your token. In your file, put Google underscore token and give it the token. Come back over to your main file because you need to do a dot env dot load dot env that will pull your token in to that variable. And down here is where you grab it. So os environ dot get get your Google token. You're probably wondering how do you set up that Google token? So come here to your account, uh, your Google account, go to security, 
Come here to two-step verification. You have to turn this on first. When you come into it, just scroll to the bottom. So two-step verification, scroll to the bottom and you see this thing called app passwords. Create an app password. It's this easy. You just give it a name, test token, create. There would be the token that I could snag. Take that token and put it over in your file. And forget the spaces, do not include the spaces. Before we can run our script, we have to first start Chrome in a debugging mode. So here is the command to do that. I just leave it here as a comment. So applications, Google, Chrome, dash dash, remote debugging port, 9222. And then here is the user data directory. Once that's started up, then our process can actually connect to it. Now we're gonna start Chrome with that command. So now that Chrome is up and running, we need to actually connect up to Facebook and sign in, and that'll pass all the authentication. Once you're logged in, now you're fully authenticated and your script can now use Facebook as if they were you. You may be wondering why is it important to log in as a user versus not. You can see here in this, window here, I am not a user logged in, and you can see it's telling you log in to get the full Facebook Marketplace experience. Now we're ready to run the script. There is your URL, there is the Facebook changing, jump back here. Now it's uh, actually loading up that pick one ENG, PNG, and now it's sending the email. And if we pop over to our email, and here we see the PNG, that did work. If you enjoyed the video, I really appreciate it if you could subscribe and like. Leave me a comment, happy to get back with you. Thank you and have a great day.